Okay, so macOS Monterey was just released a couple of days ago to the public. I've been using it throughout all of yesterday, and in this video, I wanted to showcase my top five features of this new macOS upgrade. I upgraded from Big Sur, and I was really looking forward to this upgrade because Big Sur, for me personally, was a massive disaster. If you haven't seen my previous video covering on why that is, then check out the description. I've got a link of it there, or you can click up here. So I'm going to start off and give you a few examples of why I think these are my top five features of this upgrade, but essentially it is basically like iOS 15, but converted for a Mac screen. And just a side disclaimer, I'm not going to cover all of the new features that they've released. There's probably a lot on there which you guys may like, but this is personally all the ones that I find practical. I know there's plenty of new things related to FaceTime. That's probably one of the biggest updates they've made for this OS and also for iOS 15. I'm not a big FaceTime user, so I won't be covering any of those topics. But like you can see on the Apple website, there's a whole host of them and I will be covering a few of these as well. I also had a video released recently about my top five practical features for iOS 15 for my iPhone. So do check that out as well because those things I think are really useful for the iPhone, which I won't be covering for specifically the Mac. So let's go ahead, start off. Number one, the biggest update for me, which I think is great for Monterey, is the upgrade from Big Sur and the improvements of the battery life and the speed and performance. So before I upgraded, I took a screen recording here from iStat Menus just to see my battery health. Now, I bought this MacBook Pro 16 inch in 2020, so it's only been about 15 months since I've had it. I maxed out the specifications for this, so it is super fast and it was really performing very well from the first month I got it. When I bought it, it was advertised as having 14 hours of battery life, which I kind of expected I wouldn't get. I ended up getting around 10, which I think was just still great for everything that I did. As soon as I upgraded to Big Sur, that battery life very quickly and drastically dropped to around two hours. If I'm doing a lot of content creation, I'm using Final Cut Pro for my video editing, then that dropped down to about one and a half hours maximum on battery. And after paying £4,500 for this MacBook, that was purely based on the software update. And I wanted to get away from that as quick as possible. And it took quite a long time for Monterey to be released, but I'm glad that I did. So here's a screen recording of my battery health from when I had Big Sur. As you can see, I just took it off charging when it was at 100%. And here it shows that I've got three hours and 29 minutes remaining of battery life. This is purely based on just me having one browser open and nothing else. So I've got Chrome open, as you can see in my dock, nothing else. I wanted to have the minimal usage as much as possible. I've got still 88% health on my battery, you know, after 494 cycles, and this is over 15 months. You know, I'm still happy with the capacity and the health of the battery at that stage, which kind of proves that this is purely software based. That three hours 29 was more realistically between one and a half hours and two hours in real life. You know, the time just kept dropping and dropping in 10 minute segments. So then Monterey hit, I started to upgrade and it is a huge file, it's over 12 gigabytes. It took about an hour to install and get everything set up, which is not too bad. Then I ran the exact same test the next day. And I just wanted to see the improvement by opening an additional browser. So I have Chrome and Safari open with a few tabs in each. So I just wanted to do a comparison. So I charged my MacBook to 100%. I took the charger out. I calculated the time and immediately I saw the difference. It said here, 10 hours and 25 minutes remaining on wireless battery. You know, for me, that was what I first expected when I bought this MacBook. Again, you can see that the current capacity has very slightly increased as well compared to what I had on Big Sur. But overall, that 88% health still remains. And I used this for most of yesterday after I upgraded. That 10 hours, you know, without opening any other additional apps, it lasted around six to seven hours. So for me personally, it was a massive improvement. But of course, when I do open my high-end editing apps like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, you know, those kind of things, then the battery life did start to decrease, but it still lasted around four hours in that case. So I still got more than triple of the battery life when I had Big Sur. So for me, that was a really good improvement. Number two is universal control. At the time of the release of Monterey, that feature is not available. They usually release it maybe a couple of months later, hopefully by the end of the year, which is a bit of a shame. In case you guys missed what universal control is, here's a quick sample demo from the keynote. I'm putting the finishing touches on an illustration here on my iPad. 
It's the last piece I need to finish a presentation that I have open on my MacBook. Now, I'll just set my iPad down next to my Mac and check this out. Without any other setup, I'm gonna simply move my Mac cursor towards my iPad and the iPad automatically recognizes it. And if I move a bit further, boom, my cursor is now on the iPad. How cool is that? And now I can move my cursor back and forth effortlessly between the two. Now it's easy to control my iPad with just the keyboard and trackpad on my Mac. For instance, I can click and close this document and flick on my trackpad to return to my iPad home screen. Of course, I can swipe between my pages of apps, and I can use my MacBook's keyboard to open Spotlight and say, launch notes, and even use Command Tab to switch back to Procreate. This is really powerful. With universal control, I can even drag and drop files between my devices. I'm just gonna take this drawing I finished on my iPad and drop it on the keynote on my Mac. Awesome. For our pros out there, universal control works with more than two devices. So let's add this iMac into the mix. Now I can use the trackpad on my MacBook to control my iMac as well. I can also switch to use my iMac's keyboard and mouse. And this is so cool. Watch this. Now I have a title text image I've been working on here in Procreate on my iPad. Now I'm gonna take this image and drag it across all three devices and drop it in to Final Cut, just like that. Let's see the final product. Nice. That's a quick look at universal control on Mac OS Monterey. And for someone like me, I do a lot of video editing and photo editing. I can do a lot of things on my iPad, just place it right next to my MacBook Pro and transfer everything across between both devices very easily, just like that. I also use my iPad for Sidecar, which sets it up as a second monitor, which disables the touchscreen of the iPad. But having universal control allows you to still use your iPad as an iPad. So you can still touch screen, you can still manipulate all of the things on the tablet itself. But it's just one of those things, if you are a creative person and you do use your iPad for a lot of things, and you always generally transfer to your Mac, then this is something that's gonna be very beneficial to you. Number three is having the ability to do AirPlay from your phone to your Mac. So whether you have a MacBook or an iMac, you can just start sharing your iPhone screen directly to this as if it was a TV or a monitor, which I think is great. It's very simple. I just have my phone next to my MacBook Pro. In the control center, you can see under screen mirroring, MacBook Pro has been listed. I'm just going to tap this. So it will just start to load and the screen on the MacBook Pro will change. So here we go. Let's see how responsive this is. So I'm just gonna hold this up like that. It's a little bit laggy. Let's go ahead and open up YouTube. See what it's like to play a video maybe. And the video should come out onto the MacBook Pro speakers. All right guys iOS 15 has now been released to the public and in this video I'm going to showcase to you my top five iOS 15 features that you probably use on a daily basis. Now you guys have probably seen all of the new features that this comes with, you've seen all of the videos, but today I'm only going to be focusing on the ones which I think you guys are probably going to use the most often and which are the most practical. So let's go ahead and dive straight in. It's pretty responsive and I'm quite impressed with the way this works. And for me, this is something that I may want to use just to showcase quickly to my friends or my family members something on my MacBook Pro, especially if you don't have an Apple TV around where you can airplay to a specific monitor. So that makes it very convenient. Number four is Safari updates. Now, they've obviously introduced tab groups and a multi-device sync from the iOS 15 launch and they've brought that over to Monterey. And if Safari is something that you guys use quite often, then I think this update is quite nicer. It has this nice compact view at the top as well with the tabs, but I think just the ability to have groups and separate things out and then sync that back to your iPhone, it just makes things so much more convenient and more productive, especially when you use Safari for maybe business or for your work and also for your personal browsing. So, you know, I've created a work tab here. I can go here and I can go ahead 
and take a look at all of my tabs there quickly. And if I wanted to, you know, just pick up where I left off on my phone, if I just have to leave my desk, then I can go ahead and just carry on using the same tabs on my iPhone. So for me, that is a very practical update and Safari just becomes a lot more nicer to use generally. And the experience overall, I think is just great. And Chrome for me personally, you know, that's always been my number one browser, but that takes up a lot of resources and a lot of power on my MacBook. You know, the fan starts going crazy as soon as I have 10 tabs open. But this is, I think, more optimized for the OS and for your MacBook. So for me, it's a great thing to have. And last but not least, number five. This is probably one of the features that are not talked about too much. It's right at the bottom of the Monterey page. It's this thing here, low power mode. This goes back to my point number one, where the battery was draining quite heavily after I upgraded to my Mac OS Big Sur. If you do get to the point where you feel like you know you don't have your charger with you and you're running low on battery, you can switch to this brand new mode called low power mode. Now we have something similar on you know smartwatches. You know you can go into low power mode on the Apple smartwatch, and there's also ways you can do that on an iPhone as well. But to have that on your MacBook, I think is just great. So under settings. You go to battery, you go into power adapter, and then there's a new checkbox just there on the bottom, low power mode. If you select this, this would essentially allow your MacBook to reduce the amount of energy that it's using from the system. And it operates a lot more quietly as well, so you won't hear a lot of those fan noises blowing up when you're doing high-end editing. But of course, in this mode, it would probably slow your machine down if you do end up opening like Final Cut Pros and start running like heavy intensive programs. So for me, that is a big plus. And if I am outside and I don't have my charger with me, I feel a little bit more comfortable that I'll have that little safety net to turn this into low power mode just in case to give me that additional boost to lengthen the battery that I have remaining. So that's it guys, my top features of macOS Monterey. If there's any other features that you like that I haven't mentioned, then I'd like to hear from you. Drop a comment down below. If you found this useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Plenty of cool tutorials, iPhone videos, Mac videos, and tech reviews coming out every single week. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those ones. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.